If you call me out of a toxic masculinity, I will say yes, and I am proud of it. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Mario Michel here. Today's topic is healthy normality part two. Part two. So, um, what we're going to do today is we are going to get right into the topic. We're going to start with well balanced minds needed. Hmm. Much is said in the epistle of being sound in the faith. This should teach us the necessity of caution. And oh, you know what? I got a story to say about that part. We must not weave into our experience our own inclinations and strong traits of character. This will misrepresent the precious, elevating, ennobling principles of truth and lead others astray. So far, so good. Soundness in the faith means more than many discern. It means to correct every error that exists in our thoughts and actions, lest we corrupt the word of God. There are needed for these times well-balanced minds, healthy, wholesome Christians. Many of those who profess Christ have a sickly experience. They cannot hear anything unfavorable. They lose heart if they think that they are in any way slighted or hurt. If their brethren have not been as tender with them as they think they should be. The good physician would, by his infinite skill, restore them to sound moral health, but the patient refuses to take the prescription he offers. These persons may apply the word of God to their case for a short time, but they do not become doers of that word. They soon come out under influences which suits them or which suits their natural taste and counteract all they have gained. Review and Herald, July 28, 1806, 1896. Okay. The first part. I mean, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go straight back into the first part because that first sentence very important, guys. It is very important. Um... The second sentence is, this, this should teach us the necessity of caution. Uh, so, caution. Caution comes in many forms, you know. Um, so yesterday I was with a, in a class. And one of the young girls was talking and, oh. Basically, she got angry at me for not doing something, which I'm not going to mention. And, and she started cursing at me. Well, like, yeah, she started cursing me out, in a sense. You know, what kind of funny is there was another teacher in the class with me, and she was actually supposed to be there for special ed students. And she, well, she heard about it, about that young girl. And the whole class knew about her as well. But the one thing that struck me was they were all surprised about how I high end handled the situation. I mean, she was cussing me out and cussing me out and cussing me out. And they wonder how I stayed calm 
and did not react the way she was hoping. Because apparently that young girl always get the teachers yelling at her back. I don't know if they also cuss at her back, but when she starts yelling, then they yell at her again. And I guess that makes her, I guess, calm down. But my, my approach was, she's yelling and cussing me out, yet I'm being polite and respectful. And they were not understanding why I was acting that way. Because to them, they were already assuming I was going to just jump on and start yelling at her and all these things. So, no. Taking caution is very important. That's why I'm going to spend some time in here. Taking caution is very important because... You want your image to always last the best at all time. And I I did say that that one thing I don't like to do is yell at people. Now I might do it in the fun way and people might think I'm mad when like I'm not actually mad. That's why I kinda like always smile because when I'm not smiling they think I'm mad or something. Like no I'm not mad guys. I'm just being serious again. And so, but yelling is probably one of the things that I one of the things that I try not to do as often as possible. Not getting angry is another thing I try to do as often as possible because I don't think it's the right thing to do some most of the times. And after I've been reading Charles Guidance, the Adventist Home Education, I kinda understand that certain things you shouldn't do is there is a spiritual component and a medical component, physiological component, and mental component to that. So, I don't want to take too much time. Let's just move on because that part alone I could just, yeah, get there. So, there is a way you talk to people in a sense, basically. That's what this chapter is, that part just mentioned, basically. So, all faculties to be cultivated, meaning all good faculties, not the bad ones. The bad ones need to be rejected. The good ones, keep them. If certain faculties are used to neglect, to the neglect of others, the design of God is not fully carried out in us, for all the faculties have a bearing and are dependent in a great measure upon one another. One cannot be effectually used without the operation of all, that the balance may be carefully preserved. If all the attention and strength are given to one, one, while others lie dormant, the development of in is strong in that one and will lead to extremes because all the powers have not been cultivated. Some minds are dwarfed and not properly balanced. So that's why you need to use both sides of your brain, basically. All minds are naturally constituted alike. We have varied minds. Some are strong upon certain points and very weak upon, upon others. These deficiencies, so apparent, need not and should not exist. That means you shouldn't be embracing just one side of your brain, but basically both sides of the brain. If those who possess them would strengthen the weak points in their character by cultivation and exercise, they would become strong. Testimony for the Church, Volume 3, page 33. And think of it as in a natural, or I would say physical realm. Mm. you are working out this arm and you don't work out this arm this one will become big and that one stays feeble and so when it's time to pick up something with both hands you're gonna struggle but if you work out both of them you have much it's much easier to lift them up because they both have strength <laughs> Same for your brain. Now, I know it's very difficult 
to do certain things with your brain when you have not been taught from youth, but at least try to do that on and off, at least to start, so you can get better little by little. Let's keep going. Can all powers of mind, oh no, call all powers of mind into use? All the powers of the mind should be called into use and developed in order for men and women to have well-balanced minds. The world is full of one-sided men and women who have become such because one set of their faculties was cultivated while others were dwarfed in from inaction. The education of most youth is a failure. They overstudy while they neglect that which pertain to practical business life. Men and women become parents without considering their responsibilities and their offspring sink lower in the scale of human deficiency than they themselves. Thus the race is fast degenerating. The constant application to study as the schools are now conducted, that was in 1872, is unfitting youth for practical life. The human mind will have action. If it's if it is not active in the right direction, it will have it will be active in the wrong. In order to preserve the balance of the mind, labor and study should be united in the schools. Testimonies for the Church, Volume 3, page 152. You know what? That part is so right into the point. I'm not even going to comment on it. You just go back, listen to it again, and you're going to get exactly what she just said. Or go to the schools and look what's going on in the schools and look what she just said and see if she is wrong. Because she is not wrong. Because I can tell you, having read it and seen it, in the schools now. Alright. Means of improvement within reach of all. Young men are wanted who are men of understanding who appreciate the intellectual faculties that God has given them and cultivate them with the utmost care. I'm going to come back to that, that part again. So stay tuned. Exercise enlarge these faculties and is hard culture is not and if hard culture is not neglected, the character will be well balanced. Let me just quickly, quickly put down my camera. There we go. Much better now. The means of improvement are within the reach of all. Then let none disappoint the master when he comes seeking for fruit by presenting nothing but leaves. A resolute purpose sanctified by the grace of Christ will do wonders. Manuscript release 1, page 122, year is 1899. I'm going to go back to that first part because the reason why we cannot have... The reason why we cannot have... Men, young men, and men of understanding is because of the narratives being pushed in society. And unfortunately, it has spilled into the church. Okay. Mario, you're going to be in trouble. Big. Now, okay, let me just explain what I'm going to say right now. When you tell men that toxic, no, when you tell them masculinity is toxic, toxic, then 
Are they supposed to be feminine or masculine? Because men now are being taught in schools that they are toxic, but then they try to lower that uh, supposed toxicity and they try to go for a woman and the woman looks at them and like, no, I'm not trying to date another woman but a man. So then the men are confused as of what they're supposed to be doing now. Well, the good thing is, I'm not confused. And yes, if you call me out of a toxic masculinity, I will say yes. And I am proud of it. Because I understand what's going on now. Many young men are being taught falsehood. Many of men are being taught, you need to do this, you need to do that. And then when they start doing exactly that, they get rejected because they call them um, not a strong man, but a weak man. And most of these men have been taught by women in the home and in the school and sometimes in the church. So when you have the school teaching you not to be men, when you have the home, because now guess what, most of the household now are becoming more single mothers because the divorce rate is going so high because women have been taught that feminism thing that you are a woman, you are strong, you can do it better than a man, you don't need a man, and then they go off and do exactly that. They divorce their husband for no reason, and now they have to raise a son, hopefully not a son, but most likely some of your son, by themselves. What is that son going to learn as he's getting older? To act like a woman. And then, when he goes to the church, when he goes to the church, the pastor comes up and starts preaching against men. That, man, you need to become better. You need to respect your wife. You need to respect your sister. And da 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 da. Because the assumption is men are bad. Men that have masculinity they are bad. So the next generation now, who's being raised by single mothers the majority of the time, they're gonna become and there's a there have, there's a, a difference that people are making between a man or a man and a male. So the next generation okay, I'm a man. Thank God, I'm a man. The next generation being raised by single mothers that have been taught this is what men should be like when they get to society and they start acting like what they've been told then they look at them as weak men meaning they are males not men. And this is a danger that she is being talking or she's talking about right now so parents that's your job if you are a single mom that's for you try to find a man in his life whether your brother whether you know, or his, un his uncle don't don't push away his dad because his dad is vital to his manhood manhood I know somebody who are actually, I'm going to just end up, I'm going to end right here actually. Somebody was telling, was complaining to me, was complaining to me that um, her son, she's divorced now, her son, when he goes to pee, when he goes to pee in the bathroom, when he goes to pee, when he goes to the bathroom to pee, 
he sits instead of stands. He sits. So I'm like, well, where else does he see a man standing up to, to pee? He only sees a woman every single day. So he's going to assume that as a man, he has to sit. So now, the other men that are around he, this, this, young, this young child's life, they are trying to teach him to reverse the process of teaching him that, no, when you go to pee, you don't sit. You stand up as a man. So, everyone, I'm going to stop right there, like I said. My name is Mario Michel. I hope to see you guys soon. Or I hope to see you guys again. But, if I don't see you guys again, I hope to see you guys when Jesus Christ comes the second time. And, don't forget to, um, to go to my Facebook page, like, and follow. I'm going to put it down, the, the Facebook page. I'm going to put it down. And don't forget to like and subscribe to my YouTube channel as well, which I'm going to put it down there. So, bye for now. Mow you out.